Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a marvelous day. I am so glad to be able to come to you today to greet you in the name of Jesus and to say to you, I'm fired up in Jesus Christ and uh, I'm on fire for the Lord. And I know that you are as well because our God is moving by his spirit. Our God is large and in charge. And what we're going to do what we're going to do, we're going to follow him. We're going to live for him and we're going to give him all that we have and glory. Hallelujah. When this life is over, we're going home to be with him. <laughs> now, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. And I thank God for being a born again believer. Last week I was in uh, Memphis, Tennessee uh, at the uh, uh, April call meeting uh, of the, the, the workers of the, uh, uh, the Church of God in Christ. We call it our April call uh, meeting. And uh, while I was there, I had an interesting, an interesting uh, uh, encounter. I got on the elevator at the uh, restaurant, at the hotel where I was staying, and there was a lady on there, and and she asked me how I was, how I was doing. I spoke to everybody. Actually, I initiated it, and uh, and uh, asked her how they're doing, and and uh, she answered fine, and she asked me how I was doing. And I said, I'm doing great. I have no complaints. And she said to me, you don't have any. I said, well, listen, I'm on my way to heaven. She said, are you sure that of that? I said, I am. I'm on my way to, way to heaven. I've been married 46 years to my lovely wife. My children love me. My grandkids love me. Praise God. I uh, I have health and strength. I feel good. The Lord has blessed me and caused his face to shine upon me. And I'm happy. Then I said, well, I guess I could find something to complain about, but I choose to accentuate the positives and to eliminate the, the negatives and, and to, to hold on to the affirmative. And, uh, and so she looked at me and, uh, and she said, well, I agree. But she didn't have any joy. Turns out it was the end of Ramadan. Uh, she was serving uh, uh, Allah and she needed to, to, to uh, God fixed it where she would run across somebody on fire for Jesus Christ and who loves the God of the Bible. And I pray that the Lord saved that lady and she questioned uh, whether or not I'm on my way to heaven. Well, let me tell you something. Not only am I on my way to heaven, but I'm enjoying the trip. I'm coming to you today a little different than the, the way I was the last time. I am an official candidate for the general board. I'm sure you've heard by now of the Church of God in Christ. It's the board of directors of our church, our church in 112 countries around the world. Uh, God bless us. We both some six to seven million believers. We are indeed a Pentecostal holiness church founded by that great great man of God, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, and I am honored to be in this position, and whether I win, I give God all the praise and all of the glory, and uh, I'm going to serve him till the day that I die, and even as I uh, uh, seek this particular uh, uh, office uh, and uh, this particular ministry, I want you to know I don't plan on changing at all. I plan on standing on God's word and saying what the God of the Bible will give me to say. And I say to it, to everyone who, who's watching, if preaching God's truth uh, causes you to say, well, I can't stand by that man, but then I want you to vote for someone else because I'm going to preach God's truth. Come what may, everything is going down. You know the song, everything's going down. But the word of God, everything is going down, but the word of God, and we're standing on the word. Now, my friends, we are in some cultural battle uh, today. P wickedness is just being thrown at us left and right. And it is, Brother Gary, is working on the minds of some. And one of the callings that God has given me is to strengthen those who believe the Bible and to uh, 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 
argue, to show a contrasting point of view because the world, the world is just throwing nonsense at us. The world is just throwing wickedness at us. And Paul said this in Romans chapter number one and verse 26. He says, for this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, vile affections, vile desires uh, for, and, and here's what's, here's what's interesting. It says this, for even their women. Notice, for even their women. For even their women. Women by and large, who are the last line of defense for morality in society. Women, women who hold, who historically and traditionally have told the line. You know, a lot of men have, I hate to say it, a lot of men have been crazy for a long time and, 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 and uh, have been mastered by their emotions and making bad decisions and that kind of a thing and pray for us that God would help us. But uh, uh, that woman uh, has stood her ground in the community that I'm a part of, the African-American community, 73% of our uh, households now are headed by women. And where's dad? Where's the father? How, well, what makes it so easy for that black man or any man to just f fly the coop? You, 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 you flew the coop. You left your family. You, you left your children. You left your wife. You got the girl pregnant and, and you ran out on her. As soon as the going got uh, tough, you left. And, uh, and this is a disturbing trend and we're doing everything we can to try to reverse that. But Paul says here in Romans chapter number one, verse 26, for even their women, uh, did change the natural use into that which is against nature, slaves to their own pleasures, slaves to vile, inordinate affections, slaves to an appetite that they shouldn't have in the first place. It is true that Jesus Christ sets you free, but he doesn't set you free to become a slave to every thought, every desire, every whim. He sets us free to become who and what he has called us to be. Something happened the other day that, that got my attention, and I just want to mention it to you uh, so that you won't just swallow nonsense and, and, uh, and, uh, and just go along with it hook, line, and sinker, because what they're trying to do, uh, they are attacking the, 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 the church, they are attacking bu biblical truth, and, uh, and you got to know how to recognize it when you see it. And, and look at this, speaking of this, for even their women. Now, now, don't be fooled, this is not a woman and a man. Uh, Gary put it on the screen there. You see uh, Brittany Griner. You know, Brittany, uh, not too long ago, got out of a, a Moscow prison. And I'll tell you one thing, uh, all that activist stuff that she was doing in, in America, and taking a knee and all that, uh, when she finally got back to America, uh, she realized something that's been true uh, forever, that there's no place like America, there's no place like home, and she was glad to get home. And uh, 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 I'm glad she's home. But now look at this. The, the big announcement is they're pregnant. Brittany Griner and her, listen to this, listen to this. Uh, her, I feel funny saying it because I'm participating uh, with the cultural wickedness. This lady is her wife. Did you ever believe that you hear something like that? Uh, uh, Brittany has on what appears to be a man's suit. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if she's had her breast surgically removed. Um, I don't know if she's taking testosterone injections. I don't know what she's doing. But uh, she's not a man. And she will never be a man. Uh, this is two women. Uh, and I, I just, I just wonder, 
uh, with the sister. I'm not quite sure what her name. Uh, I, I, I just wonder who hurt you, who quit you. Is, is it Sherelle? C H E R E L L E. I, I wonder what happened. You know, uh, many times when you see things like this, somebody got hurt, somebody got disappointed, somebody got raped, something bad transpired. And after being hurt and going through, it seems to me she's going the wrong way. Now, the question is, if they're pregnant, if they, Brittany Griner confirms she and wife, uh, Sherelle, I hope I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing her name properly, are expecting their first baby. Yes. So my question is, the couple shared the exciting news in a joint Instagram post on Saturday, April the 13th. Had it been April the 1st, we thought it was April Fools. April the 13th, the sweet announcement, the sweet announcement posted showed the 33-year-old athlete and her wife holding hands as they stood next to an ultrasound. Now, here is the photograph of that. Uh, them holding hands, and uh, Brother Gary put that on the screen. Now, I will mention this just as an aside. The upside-down cross is a sign of Satan. Uh, some take the upside-down cross as being, uh, you know, Peter, the apostle Peter, was hung upside-down on the cross. He was martyred for his stand for Jesus Christ, and he did not consider himself worthy to be hung right side up, so they hung him upside down out of his love for Jesus. Now, we do know that these two ladies do not love Jesus like that. They don't even love Jesus enough to come out of a lifestyle that the Bible categorically condemns. So we know that that is not the statement. But I want to say to everyone, and sometimes people uh, may not even realize it, it's amazing how you can have something uh, permanent put on your skin and you may not even realize what you're doing, but an upside down cross is universally recognized, especially amongst people in the world, uh, unless you're just dealing with people who are in the dark, just ignorant and don't know. Uh, that's a sign of Satan. That's a, that's a, that's an antichrist sign. And, uh, so I don't know if that was what they were thinking or not. I can't get in their hearts and minds. I pray that it wasn't, but, uh, uh they, they're there and, uh, there is the, there's the cross. Now I will say this, there's nothing about a lesbian relationship that reflects the, uh, biblical Christianity. I know that. Uh, Christianity as it is, is not reflected in a relationship between two women who are having a sexual relationship. And now, uh, uh, because of, uh, the actions of the Supreme Court, they've made it legal, but they can't make it right. Uh, they're married. But back to, uh, their announcement. Uh, they're expecting their first, they're expecting their baby. As a matter of fact, it says, can't believe we're less than three months away from our favorite human being. Uh, uh, Jarrell wrote in a post uh, captioned before adding, uh, the baby uh, will be, let's see, will be due in June. Now, I have a question. I have several, really. Which one of these women are carrying the baby? Question number one. Where did they get the, the sperm from to make the baby in the first place? Because you got to have something that neither of these possess uh, biologically and any other way, and that is the spermatose that is only found in a God made God of the Bible made male, not a laboratory job, not some woman who have gone and had her body all massacred. No, you, you have to be, this thing's almost like the church of God of Christ. You got to be born in. <laughs> you got to be a male from the factory. 
So, and, uh, and in order for pregnancy to take place, uh, the male spermatose has to, after the ejaculant, uh, uh, he's uh, is, is released into uh, the, the the woman's uh, a reproductive organ. That that sperm has got to swim and swim and get up in the fallopian tube and find that egg. And the sperm and the egg has to come together. So question number two: Why did they get the sperm? Because I know in this case neither possesses it. And uh, my third question is, uh, is there a surrogate? Is there someone else carrying the baby? Um, maybe they'll post a, a picture. Maybe they'll post something showing which of the two uh, is having the baby. Uh, 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 Brittany or uh, Cheryl. Um, uh but it's a mess. Now, um, I'm, I'm speaking about something that is public. And I am dealing with this because all of this is an assault. It's an assault on biblical Christianity. It's an assault on traditional values. Though it is the world. The world wants you, my Christian brothers and sisters. I'm talking to the Christians. And ain't, there's no telling what you may pose because some of you, the devil's already got you. Satan wants you to view something like this through a amoral lens. Other words, he wants you to see this and say, well, it's that business. Who am I to judge? It's I with me. Well, if you fall for that, then the devil has done a job on your mind because it is the, it is the will of God that we view everything through the lenses of whether it is right or wrong, whether it is scriptural or unscriptural. And here's the media. Here is the world uh, saying to us that two uh, women who are married, <clears throat> I can't believe I'm saying it. Now they're claiming to have a baby. I wonder, I think it's a legitimate question to ask. Which one is carrying the baby? The truth is both could uh, biologically, unless they've uh, had, uh, if you list as a, a surgery or through some other reason why they can't, um, um, or did they get a surrogate to carry the baby for them? Uh, Gary, I don't believe that, that Brittany, based on the way she dressed and all that, would be the one uh, who wants to, to carry the baby. But anyway, this is, this is evil. And uh, I want to say to the women of God who are watching, um, the women, the prophetesses, uh, the, past, the women the preachers, uh, those of you who are carrying the gospel, Stand up for the women. Stand up for women's rights. Stand up. I want to say to the African-American community, to the church world, uh, these things have to be addressed. They have to be answered. Now, I wouldn't participate. Matter of fact, I would fight to prevent it. I don't suggest any kind of violence or uh, any kind of meanness or someone walking up to them on the street and uh, trying to accost them in any, any way. That's what the left does. That's what the crazies do. That's what the people are doing, uh, marching all in the street, uh, chanting death to America, death to Israel, uh, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine must be free and all. That, that's, that's them. As believers, we pray. As believers, we show the love of God. As believers, we stand on God's truth. But as believers, we don't swallow garbage without saying something. Because we have children. We have sons. We have daughters. We have churches. And most importantly, we have a God. A holy and righteous God who have saved us not to be, praise the Lord, uh, the sugar of the earth, as I heard uh, Elder John Amanchuku say, not to be doormats, 
but we're called to be the light, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And we've got to point the way and we've got to say something. There are many other things I want to say to you, but I'm going to bring this to a close today. But I want to say to the women, women do not let the enemy talk you into changing that which is against nature. Don't, don't go in the, uh, the wrong way. The Bible says in verse 27, uh, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. Can you believe that? Leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust. What lust? You should rebuke it in, in the lust stage. If you have a hunger or a sexual attraction to another man or to an, uh, another person of the same sex, then you should go before God, whether you participate and acted on that or not, and ask the God of the Bible to take it away. He will deliver you. That is not natural. That is not God's way. So he says here, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemingly, unseeming, unseemly. You know, I, I put an I-N-G in there where it don't belong. Unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their era, what was me? Other words, they got what was coming to them. Um, uh, by the way, the President Obama during his reign, he called, he referred to this particular passage in the Book of Romans as an obscure passage of Scripture. Brother Gary, this doesn't read as obscure to me. It's the word of God and the word of God is right. And the Lord loves you and the Lord cares about you. God loves you, whether you're homosexual or straight. Jesus Christ died for everyone. Jesus Christ wants to save everyone. But see, in the culture, what you guys are trying to do, you're trying to come up with a brand of Christianity that allows you to do whatever you want to do and still be a Christian allows you to claim salvation, allows you to know the Lord and to brand crosses on you, even if you got the thing upside down, uh, and, and try to represent Jesus Christ, if that's what you're trying to do. It could be they're trying to let the world know that it serves Satan, uh, because Satan is certainly the one behind this particular lifestyle. And if that be the case, then I peeped your card, and I've told it, and I'll continue to say to anyone, if you're going to get a tattoo, because I guess... You know, the Bible mentions at least four times in Scripture. Maybe the next time I'll read those, uh, at least four times in Scripture that we're not to put any markings in our body. So I guess uh, that's not enough, you know, for us to obey it. Uh, but uh, uh, David didn't say, David only said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want one time. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life once. <laughs> I mean, I, I can go down and list of things that the Lord said one, only one time. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, and, 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 and compare that to how many times the Lord told us not to put uh, markings on our bodies. Uh, God made your skin. You ought to celebrate it and, and be glad that the Lord made you the way that he has. So look, I have tre a tremendous announcement. We have in town tonight, one of the greatest women of God who's walking the face of this earth. I love her, I respect her, I revere her. That she would come to North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction is a big deal. She's busy traveling all over the world. She is the supervisor. She is the national mother of the Church of God in Christ worldwide. Mother Barbara McCool Lewis, a woman of God if there has ever been one. I love this woman of God. I respect her and that she would take the time to come and see about little 18, uh, eight, eight, eight year old North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. We're just, we're babies. We're babies. Praise the Lord. We're eight years old and she's coming and she's going to preach the word of God right here tonight. I'm so excited. Let me grab this. Look at this. This is our praise on our eighth uh, ministers and workers conference. And this woman of God, uh, our national mother, and uh, she, she's an amazing woman of God. She has a, a powerful 
uh, anointing. She's our general supervisor of the International uh, Women's Department of our church. And our women's department is a great department. And I praise God for her. She will be preaching here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And uh, we will be here. We will be celebrating her. And then tomorrow night, my friends, yours truly, God has already given me a word. And I, I want to tell you this. I'm, I'm just going to peep the card just a little bit. I'm so glad that I know who Jesus is. Aren't you glad you know him? I'm glad I know Jesus. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm glad that I have him in my heart. I'm glad that I'm not doubting uh, about the way. You know, there's a song we sing, I'm not doubting. Uh, if I, for me to uh, give you the lyrics in this setting, it's I'm not doubting about the way. Walking in the light, holiness is right. I'm not doubting about the way. Now, the way it's actually performed is I'm not doubting about the way. <laughs> not doubting about the way. Walking in the light. Holiness is right. I'm not doubting about the way. And God has given me something to share with you on tomorrow night. So you get two doses of upper room uh, this week. Praise the Lord. God blessed us last night with Bishop Alvin Moore out of Seattle, Washington. That man of God preached. And uh, I'm sure you, you saw uh, Elder Sherrod McCoy as he delivered the word of God in our early service on last evening. But tonight, Mother Barbara McCool Lewis is going to bless us real good. And then yours truly will close out on uh, tomorrow evening. So uh, when the notice goes out, that I'll be preaching right here Friday night. You want to tune in. God's going to bless us real good. Now, I've gone long today, but I need to talk to you about this. I've gone long. I tell you, I tell you, our society is headed in the wrong direction. We're calling wrong right. We're calling right wrong. We're putting light for darkness and darkness for light. Sweet for bitter and bitter for sweet. And after we finish doing all these things, we still will have to come to the conclusion that the word of God is right. And we'll see you here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. God bless you.